time to put our microscope together. It's arrived either in some kind of carrying case or in the box from the manufacturer. And now we have to put the pieces together. First thing you want to do is take the back of the microscope out and that's going to be this big piece. Always support the base with one hand and grab it by the back so that you're properly supporting that microscope. You typically want to have the microscope with the stage facing you so you'll be able to manipulate things on the stage quite easily. We're looking at um, the lamp is down in the bottom so we should have an on off switch, a brightness switch. Um, when you first get your microscope you may find a little piece of styrofoam under here. That's protecting your microscope from uh, having that stage go up and down and bounce while it's in shipping. But the first thing you're going to want to do is pull that piece out from underneath there and I'm going to get that out by moving my stage up. So now it's really easy to pull that little piece of styrofoam. Keep it though because if you go traveling with your microscope you're going to want to do the same thing. Put that little piece of uh, foam in there and put your stage down so it's protecting your stage from being jerked and moved around in shipping as your your microscope is thrown into the um, bottom part of the airplane. So uh, any other pieces of styrofoam that might be in here you'd want to remove that. The next thing we want to look at is that we've got um, covers on all the little openings um, in our microscope. So you should have a cover where the headpiece will go. You should have covers on any open um, objective um, objective places. Here you can see that we have the 4x lens, we have the 10x lens, and we have the 20x lens already um, on the microscope, and then we have another place for the 40x lens. So we'll be putting our 40x lens in there. We want to make sure that our stage moves up and down. We want to make certain that we have the forward and back slide holder makes it really easy for moving your slide around and finding things on that slide. And then we want to make sure that we have the condenser under here and that that condenser has a focusing knob and it's definitely going up and down. This is our lamp. So the lamp in the base of the microscope, the illumination comes from this point here. So the next thing to do is to get our headpiece on here. So looking through all the materials, in our container we're going to pull our headpiece out. Typically on the bottom of your headpiece when you first get this there is a closure so you're going to have to pull that off. It can be a little tricky. When you look at your headpiece it um, has a indented piece that slides in here. And you just have to make sure that this screw is all the way out so it's really easy to sit that down in there and make sure that it turns. All you have to do is tighten down this screw. Now you don't tighten it so hard that you rip the threads because you're going to want to be able to loosen this up in case you want to show somebody else something and without having to move your microscope. You're going to want to be able to loosen this just a little bit so it can move back and forth. These are where your eyepieces are going to go and you have covers to protect and prevent dust and dirt and anything else moving inside your eyepieces. So make sure that those have covers on them. Whenever you store it away, make sure those covers go back on. You have a trinocular head here and so that needs to be covered. So if you don't lose this tape, put it on something so that when you put this head back into the uh, microscope, um, carrying case you cover and protect the inside of your microscope. Dust and dirt down in here you can't clean it. You've got to get a professional because all of these inner surfaces of the lenses inside the microscope have special coatings to try to prevent dust and dirt from sticking to them. And You start wiping on these things with a q-tip or water or xylene or some cleaning agent and you destroy those protective co um, coverings on those lenses. So let a professional work on the inside of the microscope. So make sure that covers on there. Um, 
You might then want to find your trinocular head and actually put it on there so that we're getting all the pieces together. And in this case, if you look on the inside, you can see there's threads in here. There's threads on there. So you just have to thread that on. And sometimes it can be kind of fun to get that to sit on there correctly. Don't want to be forcing anything. Just want it should go pretty easily. And now we've got that trinocular head on the microscope. Finger tight. You don't want to crank it down. You just want it finger tight because you're going to want to take this off sometime. Your camera will go in the top of your trinoc. And again, it's got a little cover to protect, not let dust and dirt inside there. So leave that um, cover on until you actually put your camera into the system. Now, make certain that this piece of tape gets sta saved. And I typically just put it on one of my little plastic bags. Always put it on the same baggie so you know where to find it when you go to put your microscope back into the case and transport it someplace. So we've got our Trinoc on. We want to put our eyepieces in. So go looking through your microscope case. In this particular instance, we've got um, these eyepieces. Store things away where you can find them again. We also have these eyepieces. So which one do you use? In this case, we have two 20x wide field, 20x eyepieces, a pair of them. And we have two 10x wide field eyepieces. Which one do you use? You would use the 10x. The 20x may be higher magnification, but it's empty magnification. You typically do not get an improvement in resolution when you're using the higher magnification eyepieces. So I tend to just leave them in the case. They really aren't necessary, especially if you want to be comparing your results to somebody else. Use the 10x eyepieces. All you have to do is pull the cover off and slide the eyepiece in. Now make sure you keep hold of that cover because, of course, if you ever go traveling, you're going to want to have that cover to protect things. So just put it right back in your microscope carrying case where it came out of. So here's my next 10x eyepiece. Pull the cover off, slip the uh, eyepiece right on in. And again, save the parts. You don't want to have the eyepieces off your microscope for very long at all because, again, it's dust and dirt getting into the internal parts. will reduce your resolution if you get stuff inside there. You notice that one of these eyepieces is not, not focusable and the other is. So we, when, when we get a little further along here, I'll be showing you what to do with these two. One focusable, one not. What are you supposed to do with those? Recognize that uh, these are like binoculars. So once we get the lamp turned on, you will be adjusting these to the right place for your eyes. Anytime you sit down at a microscope, you should adjust the eyepieces to be comfortable for your eyes. We do require that you're buying a binocular microscope because you're going to spend some time looking through this microscope and you want to be using both eyes. If you get a monocular microscope so that you've got to close one eye all the time and, uh, and look, it causes your eyes to constantly be battling each other. This eye is trying to focus just like this eye. But if it's only got one ocular, monocular, you're going to end up with headaches. So that's why we recommend the binocular microscope. Okay, so we've got that set up. Now we want to keep going down our microscope. And the 4x, the 10x, the 20x objectives are already on here. But we want to put the 40x objective in. So we got to find that. And typically, they come in these kinds of plastic containers. Notice that that 40x objective actually screws into the lid. And so you typically can tell a container, a plastic container, that's meant for an objective because the lid has something that you screw that objective into and protect that lens. Here's the expensive part of that lens. You want to make sure that that never gets scratched, that never gets smacked into anything. So having that in the lid, is a very easy way to make certain that that objective never smacks into the bottom of this. 
Now, what if you lost that lid or you don't have um, a screw into the top lid like that? Then you would turn your objective over and store it like that. You know, cover it up and um, protect it in that fashion. But even better is to have the lid that you screw your objective into so it's safe from being smacked up against the bottom. Now on all of our eyepieces, we want to make certain we have the hole. Any cap that's here, you've got to remove it. So we just want to be a little patient and feel that um, the threads are starting to catch. It just takes a little patience to get it on there. And then you screw that in. Just like the headpiece, you don't crank it down because you'll just destroy the, the threads and you are going to want to take these on and off every once in a while. Especially if that um, objective gets smooshed into something, you know, oil or grease or something on your um, stage, you're going to want to be able to take this off and very gently dab um, a little cleaning solution, a little soap, maybe a little alcohol and clean that lens off if you get dirt or oil or something on that lens. So don't push it down really hard. Just finger tight. That's all. You probably do want to check all of your objectives and make sure that they are finger tight. Uh, if they're not threaded in there completely, it's really hard to get good focus. So all of our objectives are on. We've got our stage, we've got our condenser, we've got our lamp. Last thing to do here is to get our electrical connection and make sure that you have a surge protector that you're going to plug into because you don't want to be blowing the light in your uh, microscope constantly so plug this into a surge protector so you don't keep blowing the lamp and we're all ready to start